sa legitimate political process, hindi naman bawal ang CPP eh. Ka, uh, uh, Republic Act 1700 has been repealed long ago. Pero yung indirect at direct support sa armadong pakikibaka, yan ang problema. So there is, the, to me, there is no such thing eh, as, it's an oxymoron, ano, yung legal front. Walang legal na front. Ang front ay illegal. No? So if, if that's the case, sir, how do we intend to deal with the CPP NPA? I, NPA? I mean, ideologically, to me, it's a farce. So uh, 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 what we intend to do is to convince those that are still continuing, whatever business they're continuing, which is against the law, to come back and join the fold of law and join hands for national development. No? Mm -hmm. And as a political party, they can register as a legitimate political party just as long as there is evidence that there is a total disavowal of resort to subversive means in order to gain political power. All of these theories, uh, Marxism, etc., these are political theories, and the end is to gain political power. Now, at the end of the day, it's people who run things, and so although hidden behind theory, nakatago sa likod ng teorya, tao rin yan eh. So, ano ang motivasyon ng tao na yan? It's to gain political power, and be behind that, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-divine uh, kung ano talagang intensyon ngayon. Para patas lahat, halalan. Legitimate party, hindi po all out war. Ah, oo. Oh, oh. oh, legitimate party. Yeah. Okay. Sir, sorry, pahabol po. Meron lang po kasi mga random posts sa social media na parang nakakakita daw ng mga fighter jets sa Manila. I don't know if this is true or not, <laughs> pero baka lang may detalye kayo. <laughs> hindi, wala, wala, wala ako na. Oh. O, wala akong na babalita na ganun. Baka naman may insayo lang for Independence Day. Uh, no, baka lang. No, I, 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 wala ang wala ako natatanggap na report na ganyan. No. Salamat, okay, thank you, Maricel. Nestor Corrales, Inquirer. Sir, you mentioned it was your personal position. Is this also the position of the president? And what was his uh, directive? I have to consult uh, regarding that because the only consultation I had with the president, first and foremost, is to speed up the MUP, of which I will receive total briefings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in the coming days as to what progress has already been done and I understand significant progress has already been done towards getting a consensus. No? And I have to commend Secretary Galvez for, uh, and the economic team for the stellar work that they have done. I will put in definitely my two cents worth regarding my views on the sustainability of whatever scheme is given giving due regard also to the invaluable contributions of those uh, who served our country selflessly. No? Uh, however, we must also look at the big picture that the financial sustainability of any uh, government-funded enterprise must not result to in the uh, detriment, to the detriment of the financial position of government. So we have to find a healthy balance. And I believe that uh, our men, women in uniform are not averse to the fact that they have to contribute to national government just as long as they see that at the end of their tours of duty, number one, they will be taken care of. Number two, that the fund or whatever uh, they have to participate in is transparently, professionally, and competently managed and not mismanaged. Uh, he, uh, also, the military is still a very attractive uh, proposition for a young person to have a career because there are non-monetary benefits that you can get, like free medical care, continuous skills training, educational opportunities, and the like. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, what we want to make sure also is that they are re-employable because of their specific skill sets in the private sector after. And uh, thus, one of really my programs, as you may have heard yesterday, uh, I start first with my own agency, the Department of National Defense, that we need to upgrade uh, our skill sets in the organization. Uh, I le learned yesterday we only have a plantilla of about 320 uh, or so. And the fill-up rate is quite low because of the unattractive salary rates. 
Can you imagine we're managing a stakeholder base of almost a million pesos and 125 billion or so assets under management? Can't do that with 320 people, you know, and without capital outlay. So I really would want to focus on organizational development on a sustainable basis to motivate our people, both in all agencies of the government, of, of under my watch, and to develop specific educational and skill sets. Because uh, as you know, you're journalists, a lot of happenings, uh, a lot of things are evolving, and a lot of challenges are evolving. We have to create a security structure that, that does not only mean the armed forces, but also the civilian managers, uh, the pre resource managers, the program managers, the lawyers, that will be able to address the unforeseen challenges that we may face in the future. Okay. Joe Banahan, ABS-CBN News Online. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Joe. Hi. Good morning, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> sir. Uh, you're an alumnus of the University of the Philippines, yes. po. Sir, are you open to reviewing the DND and UP Accord? No, I, I, I'm not anymore. That has been a policy already done by my predecessor, and I don't want to reverse the policy. But that does not mean to say that I'm not mindful of the autonomy of the University of the Philippines. And I urge everybody to be respectful of that without need of any MO, M MOA. Actually, when I was Secretary of Defense, I did not also agree to a lot of zones of peace entered into by my own local government, actually, uh, in the province of Tarlac, because, I mean, these are used as safe havens. No? <laughs> that being said, I admonish also and I encourage all law enforcement officers to be really mindful of uh, the balance between freedom of expression and uh, uh, and uh, protecting the peace. No, I mean, look, what happened in the change of chancellorship, there was some ruckus there. The military didn't get involved or the police didn't get involved. <laughs> Pero sir, ngayon, uh, parang last year, uh, parang the Senate, sabi po dito sa isang press release, Senate is set to institutionalize the agreement between UP and DND. So, wala po kayong plano na wala. Know, is support dito? Ngayon, isa batas yan ng, ng ating legislators at pinirbahan ng presidente. Di susunod tayo, pero wala, hindi ko susuportahan. Kasi, hindi lang naman UP eh. Bakit bukod, bukod tangi ang, ang ating uh, universidad? Nandiyan din naman ang ibang universidad na public institutions din. At ito naman, ang, in, for fairness sake, hindi lang naman ang UP ang pinagre-rekrutan ng uh, mga insurgents. Marami pang universidad na po focus lamang ang UP sapagkat it's the uh, most prominent uh, University of the Philippines, actually. No. Okay. Kathy Valente, Manila Times. <laughs> yes, sir. Good morning. Sir, the president morning. yesterday uh, instructed po uh, Filipino ambassadors to look for uh, non-traditional partners to po in terms of trade, security, and defense. Ano-ano pa po mga bansa ang ating tinitignan para mas mapalakas pa po ang ating defense capabilities? Uh, sa ngayon, uh, aside from ang ating uh, treaty ally na Estados Unidos, natural nakikipag-usap tayo. Alam naman natin yan sa Israel, sa Japan, sa Korea, at iba't ibang uh, Sweden. Recently, nakapirma si Secretary Galvez ng MOU sa Shangri-La Dialogue with Sweden. At uh, I, I think the marching order is to look for a proper fit wherever whatever serves our needs and uh, whatever will jibe with our national security, territorial integrity, and interoperability with our present complement. Okay, Ivan Myrina, GMA7. Secretary, in a previous interview this morning, you said that we should de-escalate tension in the West Philippine Sea, not just with China, but with all other claimant states. How do you see this happening, sir, and how exactly do, do we intend to do that? Uh, hindi de-escalation, actually. Uh, I, I meant de-confliction. 
Kasi ang uh, oo, oh, oh, ang ang de-escalation wala sa atin yun eh. Hindi naman tayo aggressor. Bawal tayong maging aggressor under the constitution. Yung deconfliction as much as possible. Yan ay balanse eh, ng pagtatayo sa lahat ng uh, uh, gustong umabuso sa ating territorial integrity coupled with deconfliction. Kung pwedeng mag-usap, mag-usap. Pero merong, merong hindi pwedeng i-cross ang uh, Secretary of National Defense. Hindi natin pwedeng i-bargain away ang ating teritoryo sa kahit anuman usapin. At sa, ganang, at sa, sa, sa usapin na yan, uh, nasabi ko rin, uh, Ivan, mga kababayan, na ang pagtatatag ng ating credible deterrence, ang pagtatatag ng ating kakayahan na ipagtanggol ang ating sarili ay sarili nating usapin. Kung sino man ang ipartner natin, wala nang pakialam yung ibang mga tao dyan. Dahil ito ay paulit-ulit na sinasabi ng ating Pangulo ay for purely defensive purposes at deterrent purposes. Walang malakas na bansa sa mundo na hindi malakas ang kanyang sandatang lakas at civil defense din. Ano? Kakayahan na ipagtanggol ang kanyang sarili. Kaya kung tayo ay sasabihan na kaya tayo ay nagpapatatag ng national defense dahil polisiya ito ng ibang bansa, bigyan naman tayo ng karampatang respeto na kaya natin mag-isip para sa ating sarili. Okay. Go ahead. Secretary Alexis Romero of the Philippines. Uh, may concerns dati regarding yung sa pension reforms na there might be... Uh, early retirement ng maraming mga enlisted personnel because they want they are concerned about yung reforms and they want to benefit from the old system. They want to ensure na yung dating benefits na nakukuha nila eh makukuha pa rin nila bago pa mag-implement ng reforma. Are you confident that you will be able to avert yung ganong concern na maraming magre-retire over the proposed pension reforms? Sa tingin ko kasi I mean it's a, it, it's a matter of uh, getting an amount now without the, uh, the continuing non-monetary benefits that you will enjoy in your career path, in your career pattern. Kung mag invest nga tayo sa skills uh, uh, upgrading, sa healthcare, hindi lamang ng ating mga kasagduluhan, kung hindi pamilya, and other non-monetary opportunities, palagi ko may iwan sila. May iwan sila at lalo na kung makikita nila na ang sakripisyo natin lahat no, ay magiging sa, sa kab, uh, kabutihan ng lahat. Kasi, okay, uh, wag natin sulbahin ang problema. Alright? Anong mangyayari? Magkakaroon tayo ng mas malaking deficit, magkakaroon ng inflation, bababa ang balor ng ating pera, tataas ang bilihin. So, tama rin lahat eh. No? So, I think it's a matter of explaining the... Uh, the uh, necessity no uh, of introducing sa aking palagay dahil galing din naman ako sa financial sector hindi naman biglaan mangyayari to eh mababawasan lamang ang ang dapat na pagdudugo eh, eh ka nga ng ating gobyerno hanggang sa ma self sustain na itong sistema na to at alam din natin katulad din ng pagtatanim ng halaman alagaan mo to eh uh, palalakihin mo to bago ka umani no so hindi naman uh, bingi ang uh, gobyerno sa ganon na ito ay hindi biglaan na ipapataw tapos biglaan na lang babawasan ka ng ganito kung hindi meron din transitioning ito dapat no follow up lang secretary kasi previous administrations have tried to pass or push for bills reforming the pension system. I remember panahon ni President Noy Noy Aquino, meron yan, panahon ni President Duterte, even may, naging priority bills na yan. Ngayon, priority bill uli siya ng Marcos administration. Ano po kaya yung meron ngayon, tingin nyo, maiiba at may push ito? Kasi marami na pong nagtangkang gawin ito, pero hindi naman po naipasa sa Kongreso. Uh, palagay ko, naiiba ay ang unang marching order na nga ng Pangulo sa akin na dapat uh, pag ugnayan na nga sa economic cluster na makapasa ng bill sa lalong uh, sa agad na panahon upang uh, matigil ang paghehemorrhage hindi mapapara bigla-bigla pero mababawasan ano? 
So, so we can use the funds for other things and we can also build a stable and sustainable uh, retirement plan for our men and women in uniform. May dalawang prinsipyo lang na gusto kong idagdag doon. Kailangan ang pondo ay naturally para palakihin mo to mag-risk risk reward yan eh. Kung hindi ka mag-risk, hindi lalaki, walang growth. Ngunit, kinakailangan uh, i-observe nito ang prudential standards eka nga sa banking. No? Uh, ang, ang financial sector alam nito na kailangan may governance standards, prudential standards, tamang risk management, tamang audit, transparency, at ang mga nagpapatakbo nito kailangan ay uh, sasa ilalim sa fit and proper rule e eh, nga ng BSP. Kailangan may requisite experience and responsibility ito. And it goes also, ah, eto sasabihin ko na, hindi gagawin ito ng mga tao na libre. You have to pay for experience, you have to pay for integrity. At the end of the day, uh, you get professional managers, you compensate and motivate them properly, and you'll get good results. But you make their pay uh, uh, with due uh, 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 watch standards, no? In conformity, uh, their pay commensurate to performance, no? Ngayon, ang gusto kong pag-aralan at maitanong, kung magtatatag tayo nitong ganitong pondo, uh, pwede ba natin patakbuhin based on mga standard na istrikto ng insurance commission, ng uh, BSP, at other financial institutions. At ito ba ay sasalungat sa audit code ng COA? Kasi sa pag-experience ko, kung susunod tayo sa COA, makaluma yung audit code, maraming ipagbabawal at baka may mangyari. Kaya ito ay dapat i-deconflict. Eh, ka nga. No? Okay. Mervyn Vince Lopez, Manila Standard. Sir, ibalik ko lang dun sa South China Sea. Um, may mga reports po na recently may mga foreign ships na namamataan sa may pag-asa islands. Uh, are you willing, sir, to position more gray ships in our West Philippine Sea boundary, sir? Or I, I can't pa give you the, an answer now kasi whole of government approach nga yan. Uh, uh, I'll have to consult with the uh, National Security Advisor uh, with the Department of Foreign Affairs and uh, we, we have to come out with a concerted plan of action uh, uh, with this. Hindi ko masasagot sa sarili kong opinion to kasi napaka importanteng bagay ng national security. Okay, we have time for a few more questions. Si uh, Bella Las Moras, PTV4. <coughs> Hi, Secretary Gibo. I'm Mela from PTV4. Sir, speaking of priorities lang na nababanggit niyo po kanina, kailan po ba yung uh, target nyo or uh, schedule ng susunod na pulong kay uh, Pangulong Marcos? At mula sa mga unang araw nyo sa serbisyo, ano po yung mga naobserbahan nyo na uh, gusto nyo ding uh, isulong uh, pag nagkita kayo ni uh, President Marcos para maging uh, prioridad din ng DND? Uh, ang prioridad ko talaga i-reform yung uh, DND proper nga, gagatulad ng nasabi ko, no? na kailangan ito yung makabagong organisasyon na kasi sa, sa bigat ng kanyang responsibilidad. Gumawa nga tayo ng Department of Migrant Workers, uh, nireforma ang BSP. Ha, it's high time na yung Department of National Defense as the civilian agency which resource manages and provides services to its five agencies be reformed. Already. Kasi ito ay nalilibing sa ilalim ng mga modernization bills, uh, amendment to the National Defense Act. Itong unang-unang importante na gawin kasi you cannot manage properly. Hindi tayo makakaplano, hindi tayo makakagawa ng magagandang assessments pag hindi tayo makakuha ng tamang tao. So, uh, ang susunod na pagpulong namin kay uh, Pangulo, pas pa pasalamat ako, he's allowing me time to settle in. Pero may deadline ako sa MUP niya, kaya mamadaliin ko na. Uh, na with due regard naman, ano, hindi naman ako magmamadali just for the sake of magmamadali. Mabuti ang sigurado at dekalidad na trabaho. Okay. N Nestor, Nestor I think Corrales. Was, uh, 
Sir, uh, Philippine Coast Guard spokesperson uh, Jay Tariela raised this question over the weekend during a security dialogue in Singapore. Uh, talking about uh, peace and security in the South China Sea, its actions show confrontation. As the new Defense Secretary, what is your message to Beijing with their actions, uh, knowing that in the past we have been filing diplomatic protests, but apparently it has been it had fell to deaf ears, or China has uh, not been responding to to the call for peace and stability in the region. As a stronger country, it has the bigger obligation to be magnanimous and show trust and to, to earn the trust of the Filipino people by conforming its uh, activities to recognized norms of international law, which in our case is UNCLOS. You know, uh, we're, we're talking about the arbitral award. It has already been stated by our two past presidents that uh, our rights and our territory are defined by UNCLOS, and uh, it has been stated too that this cannot be frittered away or bargained away by passages of administration or passage of time. Now, what, what I'd like to point out is, not, I, I, and I wrote an article before, uh, it's published, so I can't take back what I said. It is not only important uh, to take into consideration what the uh, specifics of the arbitral tribunal said, but the process by which it was done. It was done by an independent arbitral tribunal of experts in international law, where he had China participated, would have a, had a chance to demonstrate its legal position in a fair and impartial proceeding. So in that same vein, in the same vein, we have to follow transparent procedures, and that is the best way to build trust. That being said, relations between two countries are not monodimensional. There are other relationships that we need to build up. China is a big market for this country, we realize that. And I think the United States realizes it too. No? Uh, we live in a more uh, conflicted world where we hope that even in the uh, Ukraine Russia problem our supply chains are affected no being a net importer country no so uh, we really hope that uh, the benefit uh, of, of everybody as world citizens will outweigh no uh, other interests okay uh, Celine Dorado net 25 Uh, sir, uh, question lang po on other issues. Uh, dati po kayo naging chairman ng National Disaster Coordinating Council and uh, ngayon po ay the NDRMC. Ano naman po yung magiging papel ninyo as new DND secretary sa pagtugon po ng gobyerno sa El Nino phenomenon at sa inaasahang matindi po ng epekto nito sa bansa? Uh, I, 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 I think I, I will just... Uh uh, continue the work done. There's still a task force on the El Nino, which is head, headed still by Secretary Galvez, as far as I know. No? And uh, I will just continue to support the work done and to support him if uh, uh, he continues on that task force. No? Uh, and yung NDRRMC, I want to study also, kasi malaki ang pagbabago ng NDCC nung araw sa NDRRMC. Tapos, nung pandemic, nagpalit din ng anyo kasi nagkaroon ng mga task forces para mas mabilis nga makakilos. No? So, yung istruktura ng OCD at saka nga ng NDRRMC ay nagbago. So, kailangan kong pag-aralan at uh, batay na rin sa mga pronouncements dati ng OP na gusto yata ang OCD uh, na maging agency under the OP kasi nga uh, and it's also good that you answered the, uh, you asked the question, Celine, because separate ang civil defense, uh, uh, military, national defense. Eh, katulad nung uh, World War II, for example, uh, sa Britain, yung kasing importante nung mga air force nila, nung mga sundalo nila, ang mga nagpapatay sunog, nung bombing ng London, uh, ang mga uh, air wardens at marshals na sana i-integrate din ito 
sa ating mga uh, uh, government uh, processes. Secondly, uh, minsan may ibang mga bansa na averse sila na tumulong kapag ang civil defense ay nasa sa ilalim ng national defense, no? Kasi may international law implications yan kung combatant or non-combatant or what not, no? So, ito yata ang direksyon ng ating Pangulo at ako'y susuporta naman dito at kailangan lang, ang importante lang, huwag maantala ang mga serbisyo. Okay, more questions because we don't have uh, ambush interviews later on, so please ask already. <laughs> Okay. Uh, sorry, Gabriel Lalu. Hello, sir. Uh, any policy on uh, regarding? Because previously there have been incidents of military personnel engaging in red tagging. Na paminsan wala naman talagang link yung tao at na appropriate lang. Like even journalists na appropriate as members daw ng armed movement. Uh, any policy on red tagging, sir? Hindi, yung red tagging is a nomenclature given naman uh, by, by, by current events. No? Pero kung talagang membro naman ng armed group at meron namang ebidensya, uh, we call a spade a spade. Uh, and and I, I'll make sure naman, uh, alam naman nung mga nakasama ko nung araw, because institution building is also building trust. Pag sinobrahan naman ng isang bagay, mawawala ang trust rating at taas, taas nga ng trust rating ng ating... Uh, Department of Defense at ang gobyerno. We'd like to maintain that kasi tiwala nga ng taong importante sa atin. So, balanse yan. No? Pa, pero, hindi naman ibig sabihin, pababayaan naman natin ang iba na magtago sa likod ng uh, kunwari legitimate uh, 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 exercise of freedom of expression. Although, all this must be evidence-based at the end of the day. Uh, not only in the uh, AFP, but uh, I think even Secretary Abalos in the DILG is hard at work for uh, making police work uh, as a matter of prevention and as a matter of example, also a matter of the judicial process working. Okay, we have Vance Fernandez of uh, Police Files. Yes, sir. Uh, good, 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 uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, the, I know that you have some commitment uh, in your plans. How about the AFP modernization in order to defend our country sovereign? De, tuli tuli po yon. Uh, hindi hindi ko babaguhin yon hanggat hindi may uh, matinding pangangailangan at rekomendado din ng ating armed forces. No, uh, naka naka kasana ang mga horizons ng modernization nila. Nakaplano ito. Mahirap bago baguhin at uh, yan ang dapat maintindihan ng mga tao, no? Ako ay magfa-facilitate kung anuman ang kailangan ng ating five agencies at ako ay makikiusap sa ating mga partner legislators na sana mapondohan ito. Yan ang trabaho ko. At uh, ako ay aasa kung sa ano ang tunay na kinakailangan nila. Ano ngayon ang trabaho ko? Ang trabaho po natin ay makuha sa lalong madaling panahon itong kinakailangan nila at siguraduhin ito ay pinakamabuting kalidad sa pinakamabuting halaga at nandun ang resources hindi lamang sa pagbibili nito kung hindi sa tamang paggamit nito sa buong buhay nito ang tinatawag na life cycle. Okay. Okay. We're good. Before we go, uh, maybe some closing words from you, Secretary Teodoro. You had touched on many uh, issues that were asked by the uh, Malacanang Press Corps here. You were formerly uh, also a DND secretary in another time, and the world has changed so much, as you mentioned. We have climate change directly affecting our country. Maybe you, we can have some final words from you um, in your first press con here in, uh, with uh, Malacanang. Thank you very much, uh, Daphne, at sa lahat po ng mga kasama natin dito sa Malacanang Press Corps. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces and it's nice to meet new ones. Uh, I think this is my essential job too. Ang pinaka-importante trabaho ko ay i-articulate at i-communicate ang essentials ng national defense, 
sa lingwahe na klaro na maintindihan ng ating mga kababayan. Kasi kailangan po ang isang bansa na mag-uugnayan sa ilalim ng isang mensahe. So, nagpapasalamat po ako sa inyong lahat sa pagkakataon na maipahayag ang aking mga isipin tungkol sa mga katanungan po ninyo at uh, uh, nabigyan nyo rin po ako ng pagkakataon na maipaliwanag ang trabaho ng isang Secretary of National Defense. No? Kasi ang, ang common conception po ng ating mga kababayan ay militar kaagad. Hindi po uh, Presidente, Chief of Staff. Ang Secretary of National Defense ay advisor ng Presidente, alter ego ng Presidente, at service provider po sa limang ahensya. Kaya dyan po tayo tututok. Maraming salamat, salamat po. po, Secretary Teodoro, and thank you, Malacanang Press Corp. Good afternoon. Thank you. Enjoyed this video? Hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.